Hey, you got the Mets slipping and sliding a little bit, but man, it's going to be tough for that Yankee fan to lose Juan Soto next year. I'm not saying he's going to the Mets, but I just don't see how they re-sign him with those other contracts. Now, they got to go and win a World Series this year or get there and make it worth it, but I mean, the way he's played, games like last night, his age, I, he's he's going to price himself out for even the New York Yankees. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Jay. I think these are all the things that uh, we're trying to figure out and trying to, uh, you know, kind of predict as to where he's going to end up. But, yeah, what a game he had last night. And certainly uh, what a game Nestor Cortez had last night. He needed to have a oh, big yeah. game against a lousy team. And, you know, he certainly delivered for the Yankees last night. That was a good sign. Uh, for them, for the Mets, they've lost now four in a row. Another just absolutely abysmal starting pitching performance this time by Paul Blackburn, a guy that was acquired right prior to the trade deadline who was going against his old team, and he got slapped around early and, and often. Uh, the Mets now are in the midst, like I said, of a four-game losing streak. Uh, they, they um, you know, the, 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 the frustrating thing about them, I think their high watermark would be six games over 500. Might that, seven. 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 Was it seven? It was seven. Okay, seven games over 500. And you thought maybe, just maybe, and you know, and they, the Phillies have lost four in a row. Yeah. And the Mets are still only eight games behind them. I say only, but if the Mets could have been halfway decent over the last couple of weeks, and I know that they had the 10 game road trip, I know all of that. And last night was a, a disaster game against a team that is not going anywhere that sold off a lot of its players. But, you know, that's the, that's the kind of performance that frustrates Met fans. And, you know, Blackburn heard it last night. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and rightfully so, because, you know, he it's not his fault. He just got here. Yeah, I mean, he's going up against his former team, too. It's just something that, I mean, I don't know if there's emotions involved there, whatever. Of course but there it, is. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, the Paul Blackburn revenge game didn't really work out for him or the Mets. Now, I, the, the Met fan on social media these days is is almost as sensitive as, as any other fan base that's out there. And I grew up a Mets fan. We know that. I have still remain a Mets fan. My passion for the Mets probably peaked around you know, 2006, 2007, right around that area. I don't know if I'll ever get back there, um, but I still want to see this team win. I still love this team. I said a couple of weeks ago when they were in the middle of this winning streak that I still, because of the flaws that they had, was not a full believer in this team. I got absolutely roasted by these Mets fans. I know. I'll How can you be so negative with this team? <laughs> it's, oh, my God. What type uh, of loser are you? Loser! And, I'm, and I was like, hold on. It's not that I'm not enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And the fact that they thrust themselves back into the conversation was great because it was a point where I thought this team was going to be dead in July and August and September. We'd have nothing to talk about. But just the way that they were hitting did not seem sustainable for me. We do understand that their bullpen, albeit better since some additions, still had stinks. And the starting rotation guys have been overachieving for a majority of the year. So it and just key guys are hurt. Right. To be and there's in, there's in, and once once Senga came back and was gone was another reason why I was like, I, I just I'm sorry, but I and there's so many teams jammed up there. So I, I'm not surprised they're on this this little bit of a of a losing streak here. I still I've stayed steadfast that I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, and it's going to be really interesting. Is 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 Pete Alonso Saquon Barkley? I mean that comparison to me is one of the the, the it's just perfect where you got a team that overachieved that had a guy who was really popular that they didn't want to trade, and then he ends up hitting free agency, and his value is in a place that you just don't feel like you can pay him, a a, a running back and also a 30-year-old baseball player that's hitting free agency for the first time at, at a later age. It's like the same exact thing. Homegrown guy, but, it's the same, but you held on to him because of unexpected success. Yeah, you know, there are those Met fans that wanted to trade at the deadline. They wanted to get rid of guys, and they wanted to rebuild the team. They wanted to it's sort like, what, of the, 10% of the well, fan base? Well, yeah, about though? 10% of the fan base, but they were real. They were realistic. I think a part of you is realistic. Part of me and Jerry thinking that they were going to be you know, a potential wild card team, at least a, a team that was over 500, you know, still is out there. That still can happen for them. Of course. Um, and, you know, they— Three games yeah. over. But but the amazing thing that— Grimace me, or the— yeah, <laughs> but the amazing thing to me about what's going on with them is that one series they can't hit at all, another series they can't pitch at all, and it's it's coming 
like right after, like there's no consistency there. That that's the problem with the team, especially in the midst of another yet another losing streak. You know, they get destroyed by Seattle. Oh, it's terrible. Destroyed. That was the worst series of the year. Right. For and I don't know if you haven't well, I would say Milwaukee open the opening series was pretty bad too. But when you look at yeah. uh, like Seattle, now Seattle has been overtaken by Houston. I know Houston who got off to as bad of a start as they've gotten off to since they were the worst team in baseball and then built up. I mean, they, they came roaring back in a, in a way that's been remarkable. That's what I was hoping the Mets would be able to do. And they, I felt like they were there, like at that one high water, a high water mark point or high mark, high water mark, high water mark point. Yes. I, you would think that, okay, this is where we're going to get this thing going. And unfortunately for them, their inconsistencies, it's just, it's, it's mind numbing, and and watching both the Mets and the Yankees, you know, open these relative ser- these two series that they're playing, uh, get beat by teams that are just out of it. Uh, it really does not give you much confidence, especially if you're a Met fan, thinking that they they can wake themselves up. I mean, you know, all right, I, I get a ten game trip. It was hard. You had to go to St. Louis for a day. I all those things. You're a professional baseball player. You're getting paid a lot of money. You're flying around on. Uh, you know, charter jets, and nobody wants to always be flying and playing in other ballparks. But, you know, the game's on the line. You you can't be playing like they're playing right now. Well, I mean, basically, you come home, you have a dud after a day off after the road trip, but you've got two more against the A's and you got three against the Marlins before it gets tough again. So if you if you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you got to win games against teams like the Orioles or the Padres, you know, then then win these next five or win four out of the next five and get back to a reasonable situation because, I mean, the next thing you know, two games out of the last wild card, three games, four games, five games, five teams in front of you. I mean, it happens quick. It, 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 this is kind of the moment right now where they have got to get out of this malaise. They've got you know, they've they just got to stop the bleeding. Oh. Got to stop it. Got to stop it. Stop that bleeding. You don't have to snap and point at me. That's, that's what it is, though. I, it, you need a this stopper. Thing, th- this thing has got to stop. It's stop the bleeding. Like, I don't like that. I don't but like it's just, that. you know what it is? It's not, you're taking it personally. It's when something pops in my head. Go like, go like that. Oh, you go, want, don't point it at me. Oh, you don't want to point it somewhere else. Oh, man. What happened? Did something like happen to you back in the, your past? Where, like, this, this I think one of my teachers you? used to do this to me, and they, now it's triggering me now later on in life. Okay, all right. I'll do it. So you want me to do this? I'm going to get up and slap stop the, the bleeding crap out of you. I'll do this then. Stop, stop the bleeding. bleeding. Yes, all right. that's, that's all right. Stop the bleeding do. spot. All right. But, uh, you know, in all seriousness, this is the moment. This is like, I feel like this is their, this is the season is right now hanging in the balance. It's, you know, if they had won four in a row, I mean, the uh, the the Phillies have lost four in a row. Um, the Phillies are coming back to the pack and the Mets have well, not. The Braves will just win the division, but right? The, yeah. I mean, they just, maybe, they just maybe, come up and t- take the it like they always do. anything. You know, to to make the inroads that they needed to make it, and the opportunities that they had. That that's the thing. That's the frustrating part of it. Yeah, I, but this is. I know we could say this every single day about baseball, but when you are what you are, generally you end up where you're supposed to be. Now the Mets have taken a different road. They've been really bad. They've been really good. They've been really bad. They've been really good. But they're essentially what Jerry thought they were going to be was a team that was around 500. 500. Yeah, I know. And I mean, that, that's me 82 games. Gay match. Right. And that's, yes. and that's basically what they are. So, uh, and, and I don't. Could you make a case that they catch fire like they did towards the end of the season and then have one of these Arizona Diamondback, Colorado Rocky? Florida Marlin type runs in the postseason. I'm sure, you, I, yeah, sure I, you can make a case for it. Pitching staff is not good enough. Right, but it's not good enough. Yeah, hey, let's be serious. You know, it, it, people say what eighty five percent of the game is pitching. Is that about right? I guess I heard that somewhere. <laughs> Did said, you? Weeks. Let me let me let me. Uh, said that. What, what are you knocking over? Let me Google that. Let me see if that comes up. Uh, it does come up. Somebody somebody said that. Have you heard that, Fleegs? Eighty five percent of the game didn't is pitching. P- didn't Pee Wee Reese say that or something? <laughs> Yogi, maybe Yogi. No, no, no. That's 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 ninety percent of the game is half mental. Right, exactly. Eighty-five percent of baseball is pitching. Let's see what comes up here. No. Nothing. Nothing? I maybe it was eighty percent. Yeah, but then that would have come up in a Google search, you know, eighty five, eighty. It would have been like, did you mean eighty? You know what? You and your Google searches. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. No. Uh, there's not there's just nothing there. I heard I heard it from somebody. John you know, I've been Flaherty, around, maybe? It could have been John Flaherty. 
All right, wait, Fleegs might have something here. Uh, the Society for American Baseball Research uh, says in a John Schwartz article, pitching, as the old cliche goes, somewhere between 75 and 90 percent of baseball. Well, they're cliche. it's a cliche. I'm not saying that it's a, you know, an analytical uh, statistic that they that they fall back what on. Do you, oh, no, hang you know, on. So scrolling the, through this. It's the deodorant of champions. <laughs> right, exactly. It looks like the cliche may have began with Connie Mack saying 75%. I told you it was somebody like Pee Wee Reese, Connie Mack, somebody well, like that. Some, yeah. some of the two different guys. I, mean, I know, but it's somebody, somebody from like. that era. Oh, okay. You know, that, no you know. proof he said it, but it's attributed to him. Okay. Well, there you go. See, I told you I heard somebody say it. You heard Connie Mack say it. <laughs> I don't know if Connie Mack said it, There's but I think Bob Murphy of, said it. Dead carcasses on the road to disaster. <laughs> it's just like, that's where the Mets are right now. Yeah. Well, they, they, and by, by the way, again, you know, uh, the, the the ultimate story really for the Mets going forward is going to be what is this team going to look like in future years, and are they going to commit to Pete Alonso? And if they do commit to Pete Alonso, what is that going to be like? And I think your comparison to what the Giants are dealing with or what we're dealing with with Saquon Barkley is the same type of situation. The unfortunate situation is, much like when the Islanders didn't trade, you know, John Tavares, they're going to get they're not going to get anything for him. Yeah. I mean, and I that I know that you could not at the trade de- deadline have traded Pete Alonso. At this year you couldn't have. They you were couldn't stuck. have done the, it. The team was playing just good enough and I remember and Steve Cohen was into it. I even said around the uh the trade deadline that the Ownership owed it to the players for coming back out of, you know, this depths of despair that they were in at the beginning of the season. They fought their their, their way all the way back over 500. And, you know, I felt like the, the team played hard and they played well and they were exciting and the oh my God stuff and the grimace stuff and, you know, all of these different things that were going on about five weeks ago. It was exciting. And the team now all of a sudden has gone flat. Yeah, and it's really a a victim of the schedule. He didn't fight through it. I mean, we were talking about it. You know, you'd you'd like to look ahead with the schedule. And in in looking at it, I mean, you said you take four and six. You'd love that. Just hover around 500. And things were looking that way until they got to Seattle. And they ran out of gas. They got their asses kicked. Then they fly back. And you're expecting them to wake back up. And and beat the A's last night, and he had another terrible p- performance. So that's when it starts. Like you think, okay, end of the road trip, maybe you give him a pass. But last night, now it's but they had morning a day size. off, man. Yeah, but I mean, and again, it's, it's a horrific starting pitching performance at the beginning of the game that puts them in a deficit that you know you felt like they almost could have come back from it behind the eight ball. Right. Okay. okay. That's where I put him. Yeah, put him behind, behind, the, behind the eight ball. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. See, I I heard that somewhere too. I think Connie Mack. No, no, no that was, was a uh, Connie Mack. Minnesota Fat said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just want at this point would would you sign for would you sign for the Yankees in the ALCS? Just for the radio station. Take your Met fandom out of it for a second. 100%. Would you, you know, sign, I'm all business. You, hold, wait, Dude, hold on, I'm wait, all business. Oh, wait, I'm not done with the question. All right. Would you sign for the Yankees in the ALCS, Mets no playoffs right now? I, yeah, you know, for the radio station, of course, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, you know, that's a practical. No, I mean, wow. I'm not Eddie. I'm not Eddie. Eddie hates the Yankees. No, I know, but I'm you saying. You know Eddie, Eddie can't stand the Yankees. He loves Y.E. Day. Uh, he just, he can't stand them. I'm not that way. Yeah, I, 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 I try to be reasonable. I try to look at things from a different perspective. You know, I don't know if you know this, but I sometimes you do, uh, you, you, you do kind of like lead me into things because I was a former professional athlete. Yes, yes. That's so right. I try to, like Tiki Barber and I look at things differently than the rest of you narps around here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got when I when I listen to Tiki, Tiki's very reasonable on his takes, very bright, sees things differently than the rest of the people that maniacs that he works with. Yeah. And we try to take the emotion out of it if we can. Yeah, I, but what I'm saying is that it's so the not. Emotion, I want, of course, I want the Yankees to make it more baseball, more uh, important it's baseball. Not, I think great. you're misunderstanding my question. Okay. The question is, would the way that the Mets are playing right now? Mm. You're thinking about baseball in New York. Period. 
You would you would say the fact that the Yankees being in the ALCS would be such a good thing for the radio station. You'd sign on the dotted line, but it would mean the Mets didn't make yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, okay, right so now. you're putting me in a spot where I have to answer a question where it makes it look like I don't want the Mets to make the playoffs. I get it. I, it's called a setup question. No, 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 it's not. I understand it. You could have very easily answered it saying, "No, I'm not ready to write the Mets off." I'm not I, right. I, I think didn't, I didn't. And write I them think off. I think that, that wasn't the question. I think that both that teams in the playoffs a, would be great. That was not a part of the question. You did not ask me if I'm writing the Mets off. What's well, that? Never like said I'm writing the Mets off. Sound, I used wrote said, them off. No, I did not write them off. I just heard it. No, I did not write them off. I didn't. Okay. All I said was, and the question that you asked me was. Would you was, sign for the Yankees in you the you playoffs sign? right now in the ALCS if yes. it meant the Mets weren't going to make it? You and said I yes. said, one of these teams has got to go deep into the playoffs. That's okay. what I want. Okay. Thank God for the Yankees. That's yeah. all I could say. Yeah, but there you go. By the way, I have the same answer. Okay, definitely take that. I would definitely take that. I wasn't Give writing that. them off, though. Yeah, no, that's I a whole different conversation. I am not writing them off. I'd like them both to make the playoffs. I'm like halfway writing them off. I grabbed the pen. I didn't put it. In well, the you've been writing them off since the beginning of the year, and I understand that you are more of the pessimistic Matt fan. It's not even Me so much Jerry. pessimism. Jerry, it's just Jerry like basically I, said only two games over five hundred. I just uh, see this is it's, it's Sal has battled this in the past. Joe Beningo's battled this in the past. When people say you pessimism, pessimism, it's not even so much that as it is whether it's the Mets, a team I root for, or any other team that I'm just looking at, I get a feel from what I'm watching and what they are, and I just say it. Hey, like, the- for an example, like I, I, I think that Sam Darnold's going to have a great year for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, that's well, that's that an JJ insane McCarthy's statement. Out. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. I mean, but I said, that, I said that prior to that. I was talking about two weeks ago before the J.J. McCarthy injury that I would throw him in a comeback player of the year conversation. But that's the Vikings. Nobody cares. But I'm saying it's. I'm using it as an example for my fandom, where I look at things yeah. and I say this team's good, this team's bad, this team's good. I was looking at the Raiders yesterday, going, "This is the worst team in the NFL." Does that mean I'm a pessimistic guy? Or but not? Here, here's the thing, you know. Since when, when did the station start? Like 1987 or yes. something? Yeah. Right. So for the, I don't, the amount of years that this station has been on the dial, mm-hmm. it has permeated with negativity and pessimism. I mean, that's basically what sports talk is. It's negativity and pessimism, unless something like like what happened with the Giants happened. You know, two unexpected runs to Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. And they win, and everybody's happy. Everybody feels great. It's great for business. You know, I'm not a Giant fan. Neither are you. Yeah. But you know what? We want the Giants to win. We want Brian Dable and Daniel Jones to do well. Why? Because it makes our job that much more fun. Exactly. Because we are in the midst of it, and we get to talk about positive things as opposed to negative things. But the overwhelming feeling from this radio station for the longest time has always been negative, 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 negative. And then comes Loogie. the future. <laughs> and this guy is so positive. Yeah. And when I do listen to him and he's trying so hard to get the Mets into the playoffs. This the is way- why I'm the future. I'm telling you, generational talent. This is why I'm the future. This is why I'm a generational talent. There you go. This is the positivity that is needed around here. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, you've been here for a long time. Yeah, very long. Very long time. Yeah, 2005, even before you got here. Exactly. No, I, but I, I understand. But right. Before you were here full time. Full time, right. Yes. So, um, and, and it all permeated on negativity. You know, and I've, I've tried to bring, I've, you know, I always try to bring a, a, a breath of fresh air to the discussion <laughs> and fumigate the negativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, I'm just but, saying. I, I, I'm trying not to be negative. I, I think you, you led me into a conversation and you asked me a question. I gave you an answer, but it wasn't meaning that I was writing off the Mets because I'm not. Okay. But you don't really believe in them. Because if you really believed in them, then you would have said, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sign for just the Yankees in the playoffs. Look, I believe I'm a in realist. the Mets. I'm a realist. I think their starting pitching is coming to a, an abrupt end. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Coming home to roost. <laughs> <laughs>